A pattern change ongoing throughout the United States, but severe weather looks to return. I'll give you the latest on when and where in today's video. Welcome in, everybody. Great to see you on this Monday. Uh, what is it now? April 21st. Yeah, we're getting uh, pretty good on through the month of April here. And severe weather season has been active so far, but I think through the next couple of days, we're going to be in generally a little bit of a lull, although some severe weather and a stormy pattern is still likely to continue. But I've got my eyes on down the road about a week from now. Now another strong storm system likely to come on through. I'll tell you where it'll move and how strong it could be and who could get severe weather out of it here coming up in just a moment. But first off, if you haven't already, go ahead, like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications to stay up to date with the latest model data and my breakdown and analysis of that data and how it may affect your forecast and your daily plans. Alrighty, folks, uh, with that said, let's just dive right on into it and start talking weather here. Uh, out there right now, we've got this pretty good storm system left over working on through the Midwest right now, now pulling up into Canada on this Monday afternoon. And you can see the front associated with it. This front, unfortunately for a lot of us, is not going to make it all the way through the east. In fact, it's going to kind of stall out and become a stationary boundary throughout the next couple of days. And that's going to maintain storm chances uh, during the afternoon hours uh, through much of the week ahead. Now, the good news with that is, one, we could use the rain in a lot of places, and two... Uh, whenever you have these stalled out frontal boundaries, these are not strong, powerful cold fronts. So generally speaking, the wind shear is lower and the severe weather threat is also lower due to that um, lack of kinematic forcing here in the atmosphere. But we're going to have warm afternoons. It's going to be muggy, so we still will get storms out of this. And that'll be a big key, I think, to the forecast over the next couple of days as we keep on tracking that storm system. Uh, now, I do also want to take a moment here to say uh, thank you to our channel members. Appreciate you folks. And if you'd like to become a channel member and uh, get your name added to the list here with our other tier two and three members, you can hit the join button down below next to the subscribe button. All right, now let's kind of break down the current storm system and then just kind of the pattern ahead through the week. And you'll kind of see pretty quickly why there's not a lot that's really going to happen here. Uh, we've got this storm system. You can see it up here into the Midwest moving on out of here. That's our upper level vorticity spinning away, bringing that lift in the atmosphere. As we keep on going ahead into time, though, uh, it's going to slowly get on out of here. And I want you to notice the front associated with it. You kind of see this ribbon of vorticity. Uh, that's our stalled out frontal boundary. And you can see it's going to start to work through the east. But as we continue ahead, this is by tomorrow afternoon, it kind of just stalls out over the Carolinas and Virginia and even down into Georgia. That could lead to severe weather down that way tomorrow afternoon. And then behind it, really, you don't see any organized storm system. This is by Wednesday afternoon. Yeah, we have little areas or pockets of storms uh, or spin at least and lift in the atmosphere that could promote storms. But you don't see anything like what we're seeing right now with a well-defined, strong, organized storm system. And I think that'll really be a key to the forecast as we go throughout uh, at least the next couple of days before in the long run, uh, another uh, more potent storm system could return to the forecast. All right, latest from the Storm Prediction Center today, we do have a little bit of severe weather that's possible. I've really got my eyes up here, though, into the Pittsburgh area uh, by the time everyone is watching this, uh, as the video is going to come out uh, well, right after I record it, but it'll be this afternoon instead of morning time. So uh, this evening, though, we will see some strong storms, I think, from Erie down to Pittsburgh uh, and even into extreme northern West Virginia, including the slight threat of an isolated tornado. So I've got a lot of wind shear left up this way. Again, the storm system, the center of it, not far from this area. So uh, we still have enough of that wind shear. The question will be instability. So if you see any sun in this area today, it's not a good sign. That means we're going to really destabilize the atmosphere more than we would want to see. And again, that could lead to an isolated tornado or two. Down south, not a tornado threat today, but if we look at the wind threat, uh, we could get some uh, strong wind gusts, maybe even a little bit of hail down here from Chattanooga to Huntsville, Alabama, Tuscaloosa, all the way back down into Jackson, Meridian, and Hattiesburg under the threat for severe weather this afternoon, although not a very high threat, luckily, and uh, we'll take it. Now we go into tomorrow, another day of just pockets of severe weather. Uh, again, we're lacking any organized storm system to produce a big area of severe weather, but a couple places to watch tomorrow it does include the Piedmont and the Carolinas, Charlotte, Greensboro, into the Triangle through Raleigh, back down into the PD region. A yeah, strong storm or two, main threat, strong straight line wind, and some uh, isolated damaging hail could be possible. Uh, same story up here into Iowa. Wisconsin, or at least southern Wisconsin, that is, and then extreme northwestern Illinois, back up towards Rockford and over towards Davenport. Threat area here tomorrow. This is the tornado outlook. Yeah, not very high. So the wind threat and the hail threat will be larger. Go back down to Texas, though. Could see an isolated tornado from Lubbock to Midland, Kermit, Hobbs, New Mexico, Andrews. Again, not a big threat, but isolated tornado not out of the question. Once again, though, wind the bigger threat in that area tomorrow. 
uh, as we could see a couple damaging storms. All right, that's the latest from the Storm Prediction Center. Let's now swing on over and take a look at some model guidance. All right, here's the latest from our high resolution rapid refresh model. Just for the next day or two, you can see what radar looks like uh, during the afternoon hours. This is about 2 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah, surface low pressure over the upper peninsula of Michigan becoming occluded now, so weakening, but that leftover cold front extending all the way down towards the Gulf coastline. That's where we could see a couple storms today, including a couple pockets of severe weather, like we mentioned. So I'll bring your attention to a couple areas like we talked about. Uh, here into western PA specifically, and then back down into kind of the Chattanooga towards Meridian and the Birmingham area could see a couple strong storms. You can see that on radar. We'll go, kind of move it ahead into the afternoon hours here. And notice by the time we get towards this evening, towards sunset, yeah, a couple strong storms into western PA, back down towards Ohio, uh, moving into West Virginia. That's where I'm watching an isolated tornado threat. Again, not a huge threat, but high enough we need to watch it. Then a couple individual cells try to kind of form here as uh, single cells or even multi cells down here towards Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama. Again, the southern threat going to be wind and hail. The northern threat going to be wind, hail, and an isolated tornado. Not out of the question up that way. Now we'll keep it going. As we get into the overnight, this is about 11 p.m. The severe threat should die down, but a showery evening into the northeast, uh, into Boston, back over towards much of the New York State, really just New England in general, back down the I-95, Philly, New York City, uh, into New Jersey. Going to see some rain overnight tonight, I think pretty likely. Maybe a couple rumbles of thunder, but mainly just showers more than anything, I think, once we get past the midnight hour here pictured next to me. Now we'll keep it going into tomorrow morning, waking up. Yeah, still a couple showers left over in the northeast, but generally clearing out by the morning, I think. Uh, and then that leftover frontal boundary, like I said, it's going to stall out here over the southeast. And with it, those pockets of showers and storms could continue into North Alabama, North Georgia, Tennessee, and back into the Western Carolinas by your Tuesday morning. It's Tuesday afternoon, though. We need to watch for some of those storms to try to turn strong to severe. Now you notice here about 5 p.m. tomorrow, a couple pockets of stronger storms, maybe in and around Charlotte, Greensboro, Raleigh. Uh, heck, I think even some stronger storms back down towards Birmingham, not out of the question. Same thing for our friends down into Houston and through Louisiana, although we may not have a threat area that way right now, would not be totally shocked again to see severe weather really anywhere along this frontal boundary. Like I've said many times before, though, this will not be a huge outbreak. This is not an organized severe weather threat, isolated to scattered pockets of storms, and a couple of which will become strong to severe tomorrow afternoon. Keep it going here. And uh, by the way, we'll mention tomorrow morning, see these storms up in Iowa. This could produce a little bit of hail. That's what the threat was for tomorrow uh, on the last map we looked at. Now, tomorrow evening, though, I would say a bit more of an organized severe weather threat back out into the Texas panhandle, into western Oklahoma. You can see a little bit of a surface low pressure here. And anytime you get a surface low, the severe threat's going to be higher than if you just have maybe a stalled out frontal boundary. That's why we have a slight risk tomorrow in Texas and Oklahoma. Just a marginal risk, though, into the Carolinas. You can see some of those storms could become strong to severe, large hail, straight line winds, and an isolated tornado possible out that way. Another thing to notice, by tomorrow afternoon, just pockets of showers and storms really anywhere possible east of the Rockies. Uh, Going to be something we need to watch. Highest likelihood, though, in the southeast, the Midwest, and back down into the southern plains. Uh, now, I do want to zoom in a little bit more here and talk about the tornado threat a little bit more today into the Northeast. Again, not a huge deal. This is our Energy Helicity Index. Uh, this shows the potential for a brief spin-up tornado. We just start hitting that blue color. It becomes a little bit more likely we're going to see a quick spin-up. This is by this afternoon and evening. Again, not huge, but you see a quick flare-up of ingredients anywhere from Buffalo back down to Pittsburgh and into uh, extreme southeastern Ohio here. I said it before, I'll say it again. Not a huge threat, but we take a look at the hodograph. And yeah, this is impressive enough could produce a tornado. Uh, main reason we have the threat today is the wind shear values or storm relative velocity sitting around 200. That's uh, in that probable range for supercells to form. The main limiting factor today is instability. Cape values only getting up to about 500 to 1,000 joules per kilogram. That's quite low, but with that amount of wind shear, uh, anything is possible and you could get a quick brief spin up tornado. So not a huge deal, but important enough to mention. All right, well, we've talked about the near term severe weather threat. Let's swing things on into next week and give you the latest on what's to come. Although I said next week, I really mean this week, but uh, you think you get the point Monday, you know, still feels like Sunday a little bit. But taking a look at our upper level air map, this is going to be the key to what's on the way throughout this uh, kind of final real week of uh, April, if you will, at least the last full week of the month. Uh, if my math serves me correctly, I think so. That's right. Um, so the, uh, the kind of big key right now is we've got this big ridge in the east. That's what's bringing the warmer and muggier air for many of us. And again, anywhere you see blue, that's where a storm system could begin to form. And you'll notice this is this evening. 
Got that storm system left over up into the Midwest. Here it is in blue. Uh, that's what we've been talking about and tracking for the past uh, really about a week or so, it feels like. Uh, we'll keep it moving ahead into time, though. That gets out of here. And notice what happens, folks. This is by Thursday afternoon. Really not much blue in sight. We've got really more zonal flow across much of the country. A little bit of ridging in the east. Uh, but if anything, all this is going to do is enhance uh, the warmer and muggier air out of the south and out of the gulf as well as bring those afternoon storm chances and limit any significant severe weather chances. Again, this is by Thursday afternoon. So now through Thursday, just pockets of scattered to isolated severe storms. Uh, but I do want you to notice, I'll pause it here by the weekend. This is the next real threat I see for organized severe weather. Uh, you can see by Sunday morning, this is April 27th, uh, the anniversary of uh, the big outbreak in 2011, actually, um, coincidentally enough, although again, this is not going to be that, but uh, still watching it. We've got a new trough dipping down out west. That'll be the next big troublemaker, I think, as this kind of works into this ridge in the east. And anytime you get prolonged periods of ridging in the east, like we're going to see this week without a storm system, and then a storm does arrive, that storm's going to have a lot of instability to work with. We're going to get days of warm, moist flow out of the Gulf. This storm's going to work on through that area and could produce strong to severe weather. Uh, you can see that kind of works on through by the end of this weekend and the start of next week. So it's that 7 to 10 day time frame we're watching. But even then, the ridging kind of remains for a while. So I think uh, the storm system this coming weekend might just be a blip on the radar, then right back to maybe zonal flow, uh, which could still lead to, again, stormy activity. But uh, the only real threat I see over the next 10 days is this coming weekend and early next week. And again, I've said it before, I'll say it again, pockets of severe weather between now and then, uh, but nothing to write home about. All right, latest GFS model, and I do mean latest, this is literally running as uh, I talk right now. Uh, this is our surface dew point, so basically the more, uh, I guess, green and blue colors and even the purple colors you see on the map, the more surface moisture there is and the more muggy it's going to feel outside uh, through the week ahead. Notice as I move it ahead, yeah, we stay quite muggy here south of the Ohio River. This is by Wednesday afternoon and evening. It's still muggy in Oklahoma, Texas, all the way through the deep south. The Carolinas getting in on relatively muggy air. As we move ahead, though, towards the weekend, that surges northward. And uh, by the time we get to the weekend, remember the next storm's working in at this point. We've got a lot of surface instability and moist air to work with. That's why I'm a little concerned about that next storm system. Again, it's going to have days of this flow out of the south to really juice up the atmosphere, if you will. Not to mention, all this moisture is going to lead to, again, the increased afternoon thunderstorm risk that we've been seeing and we're going to see throughout the week ahead. So I think that's really what I've got my eyes on as we go through the next uh, about five or seven days or so. And then you'll notice here comes that next big storm system, gets that huge surge of moisture northward. Like we could see severe weather even into the northern plains out of that storm would not surprise me, especially as we start getting closer to May, uh, we start to see that severe weather push even further north. Uh, what is this going to look like on radar? Well, here it is. Again, through the week ahead, folks, it's just pockets of afternoon storms. Again, this is Wednesday. Uh, check it out. We've got an area here of storms, an area down south of storms. We've got an area of low pressure just kind of hanging out into the Rockies, classic Colorado low, getting stopped by that ridge, though, so it's not able to cross the country and bring a prolonged big area of severe weather like we saw this past weekend. Again, this one kind of stuck over Colorado and New Mexico, uh, and that's just going to lead to the afternoon storm chances under that ridge. Notice, though, uh, it kind of tries to break containment by Thursday. It maybe could bring a bit of a higher severe weather threat uh, should it break out of the Rockies. But the biggest threat, again, notice here it comes this weekend and then into early next week. Finally, a more well-developed surface low uh, breaks into the Continental 48. Uh, that is east of the Rockies and uh, potentially brings big severe weather with it. So we'll watch it. You can see that storming pattern really returning in the 7 to 10 day range. Could cross all the way from the Rockies all the way through the east coast, bringing severe weather. Between now and then, though, just afternoon thunderstorm chances. And again, I keep saying it. I'll keep saying it more. Just isolated to scattered severe weather through the next couple of days. It's this coming weekend and into this uh, 7 to 10 day range uh, that I think it could be more of an organized threat. Here's why, again, we talked about this earlier, the vorticity map, this is by Thursday afternoon. It could see a little shortwave energy, uh, pockets of energy, pockets of lift that could enhance severe weather and, you know, on a smaller scale from time to time. But the next big piece of energy, here it comes flying out of the Pacific into the Rockies. This is by next Sunday into Monday, and then finally gets into the eastern U.S., uh, by about seven to 10 days from now. And again, that's a much more favorable look for severe weather. Could happen anywhere from the plains all the way to the east, from you know, the Canadian border all the way down to the Gulf. Still up for interpretation on where we'll see it, but I do think severe weather makes a return with that storm, as I've mentioned plenty of times before. 
All right, um, another way to look at this is our European ensembles. Are they seeing the threat of severe weather? Well, yeah, they are. And you can see we get in a little bit of a lull this week, just pockets of, you know, isolated to scattered severe weather. It feels like I'm on repeat today, right? Um, but you'll notice by the time we get to this weekend and into early next week, we see a much higher increase in severe weather potential. This is by next Monday into the plains. That higher threat of severe weather then pushes eastbound uh, and uh, again could cross the entire uh, country here from Kansas all the way to Virginia uh, event here. So you can see by next Monday, Tuesday, back out of the plains, then by Tuesday, Wednesday gets into the Ohio Valley and then kind of dies off a little bit before hitting the eastern seaboard. But I think that's just more the range that we're at. The model's not going to be able to pick up on it quite as well. But again, this is a type of event that could bring severe weather all the way to the eastern seaboard. Would not surprise me. Alrighty, how about rainfall? This is just over the next week, so this is not really even including that next big storm system. The highest rain event or totals we're going to see, I think, is going to be into Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas. Again, like I said, we've got a Colorado low kind of stuck out here. It's also where the highest severe weather threat's going to be over the next week, um, especially down in Texas and Oklahoma. If you were watching on last map, I didn't really mention it, but the highest chances now through the weekend going to be over that circled area. Again, we've just got a little bit more wind shear, plenty of Gulf moisture to produce severe weather over that region. But I'll mention with that stalled out frontal boundary, we can get some beneficial rain into the Carolinas, Virginia, Tennessee, uh, especially Tennessee, maybe not so much Virginia uh, as this map isn't really so excited about it, but Kentucky, uh, Tennessee, again, we had flooding out that way not long ago, but the Carolinas specifically could use the rainfall. It's been a rough wildfire season. So we'll hope that stalled out frontal boundary can bring some much needed spring rain and uh, maybe it'll even bring some May flowers, right? It's definitely a possibility, I think, as we go through this week ahead. Final thing we'll mention today are temperatures and the temperature anomalies. Uh, I'll kind of breeze on through this, but warmer than average temperatures likely through the week ahead. You can see that orange just taking hold. This is by uh, Thursday afternoon. Again, quite warm for many of us across the lower 48 in the continental U.S. Keeps it going, stays that way, stays warm, and then maybe a pocket of cooler air about a week from now into the east. But generally speaking, this work week looks quite warm. Then after that, again, the ridge takes hold once more and warmer temperatures are back in the picture. Alrighty, folks, uh, that's all I got for you on this Monday. Hopefully you enjoyed the video again. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Y'all have a great one. Stay safe. I'll see you all next time.